Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well and welcome back to another one here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be going through power supplies for PCs and getting an understanding as to how exactly can we convert them to make use for our radio controlled chargers. Now to make this simple, what I've done is I've placed four PC power supplies here up on the desk and we're gonna be able to look at them and different stages of completion. Before we dive too deep into this video, I do have to state that it is a really good idea and I highly suggest that you have some form of hobby based background knowledge on electrical systems as it relates to PC power supplies or AC power. This will help keep you safe as we're not going to go through every specific detail that is inside of these power supplies. We're going to be looking at different sections of the power supply in different levels and stages of completion. So with that being said, let's jump into it and start off by taking a look at the power cable that would typically exist in a PC power supply. To start off, I'm going to grab the the most common cable that you'll find on a PC power supply. Now this particular cable, you may find other connectors on it, all of these smaller connectors. This is your typical SATA power connector. You got other connectors on here. And then you have this main 24 pin connector. And this is the guy that gets plugged into the motherboard. And right at this exact moment, this is the one we're interested in. I'm gonna show it on the other camera here. You can see a couple different wires here in terms of colors and the one here, in connector position four from the top is going to be colored in green. And that is important because the green wire here is essentially what allows you to turn the power supply on. Now I did mention in a couple videos ago that I ended up doing power supply conversions and I had problems with one particular power supply. And that is one of the four that we're gonna be looking at here today. And you might be the knowledgeable person to make a suggestion to me as to what I can possibly try because that power supply does not work and I thought it did. We're gonna go through that. There's one major step that we're gonna cover that allows us to really understand and mitigate the risk so that we don't do extra work until we have that problem solved. I'm gonna cover that in one of the steps that we go through here first. So now that you've recognized and understood where that green wire is, what we also are interested in is any one of the black wires. So your black wire is going to be your reference wire. That's your zero volt, that's your ground wire. As it relates to the DC circuit here, this is the pairing of wires that we're ultimately interested in when we're just starting off this conversion. Now, what, what I typically do for this is I take the whole harness and I'll just cut it off. I understand all the connectors are here and I group all my wires and then I separate out the ones that I'm interested in and first being that green and black wire. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate out our yellow and black wires. And that's kind of what we see here on the table here where we have the wires separated out. I got yellow and black wire separated out. Yellow is typically your 12 volt leads. You're gonna have 3.3 volts and five volt leads also in your power supply. And you can see them with the other colors. We got red and we got orange here as well. Both of them represent those other voltages. And then there's other wires in here that represent, of course, other variations of voltage that come from your power supply too, because those are absolutely needed when it comes to your PC. We're not interested in any other colors other than the yellow, the black, and the green at this point. And what you'll want to do is double check the color coordination for your specific power supply. And this can be done on a label, or you can also do this by measuring the voltage at each one of those points. So now let's jump back to our um, unit here on the desk. And this here is now in the stage of cut off that lead. This is actually from another power supply that has been cut from. But now what we can recognize is that we got the green wire, we got a black wire. And what I've done with that is I've made that connection. So that essentially turns on your power supply. That's the reason why this connection has been made. And then the next connections I've make making here is I've grouped a bunch of black wires together and I've grouped a bunch of the 12 volt plus 12 volt wires together there as well. That's important because essentially what we're doing is we're going to want to draw a more significant amount of power from the yellow and black leads, but one wire is not strong enough to carry the load that we plan, plan on placing onto these power supplies. So we gather multiple leads there so we can boost up the potential capacity in terms of what wires can carry. So now let's jump back to this here. And what I've done here is I've wired this now to a charger. This is the important step that I would highly 
recommend taking once you've gotten it to this far. So I haven't really optimized the wiring here at all. We're gonna cut this down in a later stage here, in a later step, but the first thing that I wanna do once I get to this point where I've taken off the cover, I've identified the colors of wire, I ended up taking the yellow for our positive 12 volts and our ground, our zero volt reference, and I've made the connection to the ground, to the switch, wire there for our PC. Now I wanna actually try this to make certain that this actually works. So I'm gonna grab a 110 volt cable and I'm gonna plug that into the power supply. Now I've not messed with the ground on this power supply. I know this is grounded. I've also double checked that. You wanna make sure you've done the same thing so that there's no issue as it relates to the power supply, especially when you're plugging in the high voltage. And another thing that you absolutely want to make sure you avoid is don't touch anything as this thing is powered on. I think this should be self-explanatory. We got higher voltage in here that could cause electrical shock if you were to touch a component that has been powered. Another good point here is that there are capacitors located on this power supply and even when you do remove the 110 volt cable you could still get shocked because those capacitors are still having the potential of carrying power. So you don't want to touch any of the components in there and you want to make certain that it is discharged fully before you go and start to touch anything. And a really good point to make here here too is that there is really no reason to touch anything inside of this power supply. You want to just avoid all of the stuff inside. We don't need to go and touch any of that. We're ultimately interested in the wires that actually come out of the power supply. That's it. And even then, I don't touch those wires. I'm only touching the insulation that surround the wires. So now with that being said, I'm going to plug this into 110 volts. So now it actually turns on. What's really nice about this is this is telling me that our power supply has worked. Our connection that we've made on the green wire to black wire has allowed this thing to turn on. Now here's the key that I didn't try before. I've done this in the past with another power supply that we're going to get to very shortly here, but that one doesn't work and it did pass this step. The other thing I'd recommend in addition to this, which I didn't do, is allow this to actually run under a particular load. So there's no load on here. I'm not charging a battery. You can charge a battery too if you wish that is within the certain specifications of your your AC power supply. But one of the big things here is to allow this to run for at least a minute or so, so that you have confidence that this is working. Now that you've established that this has been working for a good amount of time, now you're ready to go and move on to the next step, which is ultimately refining what you've done and getting this to a point where you can use it as a 12 volt power supply. So assume that about a minute has gone by, this charger has now been working for quite some time. I know that that has been powered and it hasn't turned off. This is not something that has been done on a previous power supply. I'm gonna to get to that in a couple stages from now. So now that we have this verified, I'm gonna unplug this and I'm gonna move on to the next one. This is actually ready to move into the next step. So I'm gonna take this and push it off to the side. So we'll leave it over here for now and we'll grab our next power supply. So this power supply here is now a little bit further refined and it resembles very similarly to the last one in terms of what we're dealing with. So I'm gonna put this on the table here and what we can see is that we now have a whole bunch of wires cut. I've taken the black wire and the green wire and I've positioned that over here and made that connection to allow it to turn on. So this is totally ready in order to be powered on but we're gonna be moving to the next step because we've already verified that this is powered up and allowed to run properly. So the next step from here is to group those black wires like we've done before, group the yellow ones. We've cut them back to the point where we can actually, you know, deal with them and put make them into a connector that we can use to plug in later. But we also have to deal with all the other wires that we see here. Now ultimately what you want to do here is not have anything exposed. I've cut them down to a reasonable size. I don't overcut them because I want to leave some wire, some insulation so that we can get a piece of heat shrink tubing onto it and heat shrink it down so that we don't have access to those. We do that for the red wires, the orange wires, and all these other individual wires that we see here. There might be a brown, a green, and a purple, and gray. There might be other colors there. We wanna make sure that we heat shrink tube each one of them to make sure they cannot short out and go to ground. That's essentially the conclusion here to step two on what I've done here with the power supply is just taking all those wires cut them down, get them ready so that we can start our terminations and heat shrinking them. So now I'm gonna move on to the next step here. And the next step involves now taking that heat shrink tubing and 
putting that in place. So what I've done here is I've actually soldered in our black wire to our green wire here. That has now been soldered and it also has been covered with a heat shrink piece of tubing to make sure that we don't short out against any other wire here on our circuit. So what I've also done is taken the red wires and the orange wires, those have now been heat shrunk and I'm now just needing to do that with the last set of yellow wires that I'm not going to use. So that's the next step is to heat shrink these guys and make sure that they are not exposed. And then what I've done is heat shrunk and soldered them to a connector. For a connector, you can use essentially anything you want. The most common one that are used here in chargers is gonna be your four millimeter banana style connector. And that is what's being done here. I've soldered this now to a connector and then I heat shrunk this on this side as well. And on the, the negative side, the negative terminal there too. And then what the next step is from here is you'll want to deal with the connector on the outside of your panel. What I've done is printed off this plastic piece here and this plastic piece you can make something out of wood if you want. It just needs to be something that doesn't conduct electricity. This will make it much more simple for you to deal with. You don't need to 3D print it. If you have that option you can design essentially anything you want. If you don't have that option you could just cut it out a piece of a wood and that'll be fine as well. And what I did is I fastened it into to the metal case of my power supply and then I heat shrunk the outside of those connectors so you don't have anything that could fall on them and short out the leads on the outside external side of your power supply. So once you get to this point it's essentially done. That's really all it takes to get a power supply that's going to work. Now the problem with this one and this is where I'm looking for your help. No matter what I've done I've also tried multiple different things that have been recommended to me on a PC power supply type forum and so far nothing has worked. I thought everything was good when I went through this process but I didn't leave the power supply running for more than about 15 seconds. So after 5 to 10 seconds I thought everything's good. It was charging it was start charging my battery pack, but the problem is is I just canceled it and you know that was the end of it. I turned it off. Well, after about maybe 20 to 25 seconds everything just turns off and goes dead. So nothing actually works after that time period. It just seems like this particular power supply is not seeing exactly what it needs from otherwise what should be a PC. So it's going and shutting itself off. And I don't know exactly what I need to do in order to keep this guy running. What I've tried as recommended on a bunch of forums is to load different points of the actual circuit here. So I've taken the orange leads here, which I don't remember if it operates a 5.5 or the 3.3 volt, doesn't really matter which one, but I've taken them and I've applied a load to try and simulate that some power is being drawn, therefore it should stay on. I've done that to the 3.3 volt side, I've done it to also to the red, the or if, it, if that's the 5 volt side, and I've done it also for the yellow side on two different circuits, because there is a plus 12 volt circuit 1 and a 12, plus 12 volt circuit 2, and both those are independent, and they're independently identified too with a green strip that runs down the insulation, the yellow insulation jacket of those particular wires. So that's what's happening here for it. Unfortunately, I don't have this running. I can use it to power something for 10 seconds, whether I'm drawing an amp or I'm drawing 15 amps. I've tried all kinds of different things and it'll work flawlessly but only for a limited amount of time which is really super annoying going through all that work and then realizing it doesn't work. So not the biggest deal, just annoying. Now what you'll find for the finished product, this is what the finished product looks like. So once you have completed your total conversion, this is probably what you'll end up with, something like this. Now what I've done with the connector is the same idea as this guy. I've placed that 3D printed unit here that 3D printed unit and then I use the four millimeter female bullet style connectors and that is gonna allow me to plug into all the chargers that I use including even the one that you've seen on the ground when my primary charger is being used and charging something else. Uh, another thing here is once you completed that, you will want to reconnect anything that you've happened to disconnect. You may have had to disconnect your fan lead and then you'll want to plug that back in and then place the top cover back on, fasten that back in, and then you're gonna be trying this yet once more. You know it worked, it should still work. If it doesn't, then you got something wrong. 
Now, if you follow all of those steps as safely as you possibly can, the last thing we need is to get some form of electrical shock. If you do that, you're going to end up with a very inexpensive power supply that will operate your charger. And many of these power supplies can do a minimum of 15 amps. In fact, what I do on the side of them is I actually place a bunch of labeling on it just for myself in reference. This particular one, I think, yeah, it says on it, does a maximum of 16 amps. Now, what I typically do is I will load the power supply at that specific voltage and current, in that case 12 volt power supply at 16 amps, and then I will make certain that it can actually handle that without overheating. I will measure temperature. This is, you know, going a step above making certain that everything is working fine and it's going to be safe to use. Now the reason I say that is because many of these PC power supplies are probably not being loaded at full bore maximum capacity on that 12 volt circuit. It's probably going to do that for maybe a minute at a time or a couple minutes at a time and then it's going to be reduced to a more normal operating current within the unit which is probably going to be 50% of what that value actually was. This particular unit was rated somewhere around the 20 amp mark and what I've done is I've just derated that to 16 amps. It'll just keep it a little bit more reliable for me. Me, a little cooler operating and that makes me feel a little bit more comfortable which is exactly what I typically go for on this channel we're always conservative and that's exactly what I've done here with the power supply as well now I want to show you this is the side of a power supply that shows us the label here and we can see different bits of information that tell us what we should expect to see from this particular unit and this is what you could go and base off your decisions for your power supply on how much load you're actually going to pull you should make certain that you're never going above it and beyond these values but you'll also want to check because sometimes it'll say that the plus 12 volt circuit you have a certain amount of current but if you're using other circuits there then you're reduced to a maximum of so many watts and you'll have to go through the calculation just to make sure that you are not exceeding the values that are on the label what I recommend just like what we talked about is that we're going under those values and making it more reliable and conservative so that we know that we're not going to be overshooting those values well guys, it's really that simple. I'm going to make another video here that shows a power supply that's got a lot more power potential. It's operating at 24 volts. I haven't done anything with it and it's in fact the first time that I'm actually doing this. I'm going to make a video in a couple weeks on that as well and we can go through exactly how we get that converted over for use in our radio control hobby. It's actually probably going to be easier because it's essentially done. All we need to do is cover up the terminal ports and wire that to banana plugs and we are set. Look forward to that video. I got a few more videos coming down the pipeline, a couple that also deal with power supplies. And of course, if you know the answer to my power supply struggles on this guy, if you can help me get that running, that would also be greatly appreciated. Leave a comment in the section below. Thanks a lot, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.